Morning. Welcome to Business Morning. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwagu. Well, the monetary policy of the Central Bank will today announce its decisions on the next policy directions. Nigeria surprised the market with its first rate cut in more than three years in March in a bid to boost the economic growth with the Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefiele's second term secured now. Inflation still well above the target range of 6% to 9% and possible price pressure coming from the 67% increase in the national minimum wage that lawmakers recently approved. Most economists forecast the rates will be kept unchained. Well, we will discuss more of these later on the show. And don't forget, Channel TV will bring you the live broadcast of the briefing by the Central Bank Governor by 2 p.m. And to the markets now, the equities market closed the first trading session of the week on a positive note as the benchmark index appreciated by 1.74% to 29,373.40 points, driven by the bullish run in the shares of MTN Nigeria. Well, let's bring in Temple Ashaju for more. Good morning, Temple. Now, could you bring us up to speed with what transpired in the markets yesterday? And again, the NSE has clarified its position on the concerns on MTN shares. Tell us more. Okay, so we were really positive yesterday, and that's the third consecutive session of positivity we're seeing in the market. We had actually thought that the market will, uh, the all share index will fall back to some 20. 8,000 psychological lines, some levels that we last saw it around 2016, 2017, early part of 2017. But uh, thanks to MTN, which has, which has now continued uh, to, you know, to blaze the trail in the market and has continued to support this uh, optimism that we've been seeing in recent times in the market. So basically, uh, yesterday we're up, as I said, by 1.74%. We added some 221 billion naira to the equity capitalization, which means we've continued to grow since the listing of MTN shares on the Nigerian stock exchange here. Yesterday, we settled at 12.93 trillion naira, and it, this tells us that we are now crossing back to the 30,000 psychological line uh, where the market was, you know, a few weeks ago until the a later part of, um, of, uh, of April. We'd hear about activity level yesterday was really, really positive, except for the volume of transactions that we saw declining by 20%. But when you look at the value of transaction, almost uh, 8 billion naira was what we recorded yesterday, uh, was positive by some 5%. Now, if you look at the year-to-date uh, losses, that has also moderated from 10% where we hit before the uh, MTN listing in the market last week Thursday. Now we've moderated to 6.54%. But in terms of the month-to-date performance, we've now returned to the green zone. We're up by some... 0.73%. Uh, That's the level we saw the market returning to yesterday. And of course, uh, if you look at the level of transaction yesterday, top trades yesterday, we saw MTN uh, rising by some 9.96%. But of course, we saw 51.4 million units of its shares traded for a total value of 6.2 billion naira. And that, those are the numbers that really, really contributed to the uh, level of activity that we saw in the markets yesterday because if we look at the volume of transactions we saw 7.93 billion naira in total uh, a whopping 6.2 billion naira actually came in uh, from MTN uh, through some kind of uh, cross uh, some kind of uh, crossings in that regard because this is something that has become some cross dealing that has now uh, become an issue in the market and that was the exact uh, issue that the Nigerian Stock Exchange sort of tried to you know, uh, 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 address yesterday. We understand that uh, the, uh, the trades on, on, on MTN shares have actually been a total of 105.30 million shares since the listing. Uh, and that has taken place in just three sessions, valued at some 12.23 billion naira in total trades. And we know that there are just 10 billion member firms that have been carrying out uh, all of this uh, trading. But the trading have actually been across uh, just, just 134 uh, crossings uh, or negotiated deals. That's what we've been seeing in the market. So that has made it difficult for some clerks and dealers in the market to be able to purchase uh, MTN shares. And that sort of raised a concern. So yesterday, this, this, the, the, the exchange uh, sent out the press release late last night uh, explaining their position on this, talking about the fact that, yes, they have heard the uh, uh, concerns of a lot of the uh, brokers and, of course, uh, stakeholders in the market, and these will be addressed uh, given the rule book of the uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange, which actually creates no exception to the fact that you, as a dealer, 
uh, have got uh, the ability to do cross-dealing, you know, between two clients, making it difficult for uh, some kind of other uh, third party now to participate in these uh, dealings if you are a stockbroker on uh, this particular MTN shares. So that sort of uh, issue, which is the major concern of a lot of brokers here in the market, that has also led to uh, off-market uh, tra transactions in the system, is something that the uh, uh, exchange, the NSE, has now concluded that it will address uh, going forward because the rule book of the Nigerian Stock Exchange doesn't give exception to cross-dealing uh, sort of. So basically, to create some kind of uh, equity in the system and uh, give a fair share of these uh, uh, MTN shares to a lot of uh, traders and investing public here. The exchange has said that it will try to create some kind of transparency around that uh, going forward. But if we move further now and look at the sectoral performance of the market, we realize that the banking sector was down by 108 business points yesterday. The consumer goods sector rose by some 0.02%. Industrial goods segment of the market, due to some kind of losses we saw around um, WAPCO and Kiosk PLC, we ended down 0.04%, but we know that uh, Dangode Cement was actually positive yesterday, and that's how we're able to offset uh, the impact of those losses uh, to, you know, being weightier on the industrial segment of the market. If you look at the insurance side of things, that's really positive by 181 uh, basis points. Linkage insurance rose by some 9.09%. Name insurance also shut off some 7.27%. Uh, of course, there's a the news around that, uh, given the recapitalization, uh, exercise that is likely to be pay, play, playing out in that sector uh, going forward. We understand that NICOM has now given uh, some kind of an ultimatum which became effective yesterday to insurance companies to try to recapitalize their uh, fully paid up share capital in the market. And that is something that is likely to continue to change the paradigm for the insurance sector going forward. The oil and gas segment of the market was really weak yesterday by 111 basis points. And, of course, this takes us now to the energy stocks where we saw movement across just three companies today. Uh, Forte Oil, Forte Oil, uh, so yesterday opened at 28 Naira. Now it has, deepened, it has dropped further to so 25 Naira, 55 Cobble. Uh, we, saw, we continue to see some kind of profit taking on that side of the market due to the gains that we had seen uh, on that company as of the tail end of, uh, of April and, of course, for the earlier part of uh, May. So that is now giving way to some kind of profit taking. That's why it was on a decline of 9.88% yesterday. If you look at O and Do, it was down by 2.08% uh, yesterday. And of course, that represents some kind of profit taking as well. The third company that moved uh, albeit negatively in that side of the market yesterday was Japal PLC, which is down by 3.85%. And of course, 1.72 million units of the shares were actually traded. Moving on to the unlisted securities market, where things were beat bearish as well yesterday, we're down by some 0.21%. We got um, uh, the market capitalization uh, falling to uh, 545.14 billion naira. And of course, the total volume of transaction we saw yesterday uh, was 110,400. Uh, contributing to this volume of transaction, uh, which is valued at 13.08 million naira, uh, Afriland. Uh, uh, properties, and of course CSCS, which is the depository of the capital market. You also have Food Concept, you have Niger Delta Exploration Production Company, and of course NIPCO PLC, these two companies being oil and gas companies. They were the ones that really contributed to the uh, transactions we saw there at the end of the market yesterday. Uh, moving on to the fixed income side of market, we saw that there was, uh, trading was really flat on the bond side of things yesterday. Uh, the benchmark yields remained unchanged. Uh, that side of the market has actually been called for some time now. Investors have uh, seemed to be more bullish in the treasury bill side of second, uh, things. We see that uh, bond traders basically uh, are keeping a wait-and-see approach on the CBN uh, Monetary Policy Committee meeting, uh, which is to end today. And they are waiting the decision to see how uh, the change in rates, the possible change in rates, will impact on uh, the bond market. But if we move to the... Uh, uh, the Treasury bill side of the market, uh, we notice again that the central bank has actually been holding off on OMO auctions uh, in recent times. The system liquidity has actually moderated to 49.6 billion naira, and of course, trading activity, uh, we understand due to the system liquidity, was really uh, still positive uh, yesterday because uh, there hasn't been any activity at the primary side of the market. So, average Treasury bills yields compressed by some 16 business points yesterday. And we know that demand was strong across the board, uh, but it was more significant 
at the uh, long end of the curve where there was a significant uh, decline. We understand that uh, the 16th of April 2020 security uh, got a discounted rate of 12% uh, yesterday in the market. Kimeze. All right, Temple, thank you for those um, updates. Well, the insurance um, uh, recapitalization mandate is something, is a developing story, something we'll continue to look at and perhaps uh, see other implications in, um, in that um, development. Perhaps there could be some mergers and acquisitions in that um, sector. I'm sure we'll have time to talk more about that in the course of the week.